If you ever suffer a serious accidental injury, you'll need an attorney in the complicated field of personal injury litigation. Mark T. Freely, a resident of Long Island's North Shore, is that attorney. Mark Freely has practiced personal injury litigation for over 20 years and is the managing partner of a prestigious Long Island personal injury law firm. Mark and his firm have successfully won thousands of accident and injury claims for their clients. Mark T. Freely, Long Island's North Shore injury lawyer. The experience you need, the results you deserve. Hi, I'm Mark Freely, the North Shore Injury Lawyer, and today I'm going to talk to you about the nuts and bolts of a trial in Suffolk County, the trial of a personal injury action in Suffolk County, I should say. Um, in Suffolk County, we have a bifurcated trial system, which means there are two separate parts of the trial. The first part deals solely with liability, meaning how and why did the accident happen and who is at fault for what percentage. So when we go to trial, We'll be picking a jury. We're picking six jurors and two alternate jurors to decide the outcome of the case. And basically the juror's function is to decide the facts of the case. The judge tells the jury what the law is and the jury decides what the facts are. And so the attorneys, after they finish jury selection, they'll be assigned to a judge who will preside over the matter and the plaintiff's uh, attorney will make an opening statement. Basically, it's a guide map to the jury about what the plaintiff's attorney intends to prove in court, what the evidence will show. And the evidence is going to be the testimony of the plaintiff, the person who brings the lawsuit, the testimony of the defendant, the person who the plaintiff says caused the accident. There may be um, the investigating and responding police officer who may testify. The police accident report may come into evidence. Uh, photographs of the accident scene, photographs of the vehicle damage, the position of the vehicles. <clears throat> if there's a, a big issue of liability, you may hear from an accident reconstruction expert. Um, those are the type of witnesses and experts you may hear from. You will hear nothing about the injuries or what happened physically to the plaintiff. It, and if that comes up during the first part of the case, it's actually going to be a mistrial. And we'll have to start the trial all over again, only on the liability portion. And the reason they don't let the jury hear about the plaintiff's injuries is because they don't want sympathy to play a part in the jury's determination about how and why the accident happened. And that makes sense. After the witnesses testify, and the evidence presented um, to the jury. Each side will make a closing statement called the summation. The lawyers will be telling the jury what they think the evidence showed, arguing their positions. And um, then the judge will read what the law is to the jury. And then the jury will retire to deliberate. And the jury will be given a, um, a questionnaire. And it's a very simple um, questionnaire. It'll say, was the defendant negligent? Yes or no? Was the defendant's negligence a proximate cause, or they use the word substantial factor, for causing the accident? Yes or no? Both of those questions would have to be checked yes in order for the plaintiff to prevail on the case. The next set of questions would be the same for the plaintiff. Was the plaintiff negligent, yes or no? Was the plaintiff's negligence a substantial fact or approximate cause of the accident? And then it would be the percentages. What percentage at fault was the defendant? What percentage at fault was the plaintiff? And the total must equal 100. So let's say that the, um, the verdict came out the defendant was 80% at fault, and the plaintiff was 20% at fault. That would be the verdict on the liability phase of the trial. And then the second phase of the trial, which is the damages portion, would then begin.